Hey there, CPO here, and uh, this is part two of uh, a video series to demonstrate the use of the SoCo kit from SoCo Heli Tools uh, to set up my fly bar uh, head on this Tarot 500. So uh, the SoCo kit is my setup method of choice. Uh, there are lots of other videos on setting up uh, these CCPM uh, fly bar heads. Um, I chose the Soko Heli kit because I like the idea that I could uh, adjust the swash level without having to take the, uh, the entire head assembly off the main shaft and it could just do everything uh, at once. So if you remember from the first video, uh, the initial uh, uh, key component of this methodology is to ensure that your main shaft is uh, perfectly straight up and down. So everything uh, stems off of that fact. So if you haven't done that, go back to video one and uh, take a look at that because that's um, where I'm at today. Um, and uh, so basically I'm to the point now where I have my main shaft straight up and down. One thing I did do, um, and I mentioned in the first video that I was just gonna eyeball the, uh, the fly bar because uh, for all of this setup my fly bar has to be completely uh, level, perpendicular uh, from, from the main shaft or level with the blades. Uh, the problem is this is a one-to-one -one mixing ratio uh, with this particular style of head. Um, so every little tiny smidgen of, uh, uh, of movement with the fly bar is very noticeable in the pitch gauge. So in order to uh, introduce less stress into my life about trying to constantly maintain whether or not that fly bar is, uh, is level, I just decided to build a quick you know, fly bar uh, lock. It's just kind of a homemade job here. Um, nothing too fancy, uh, but it was uh, fairly cheap and easy to do. So basically I just have, uh, you know, this locking mechanism which, uh, which has it locked perfectly level uh, uh, and, uh, and basically perpendicular to the main shaft. So with that said, uh, you're going to see that on there and that's why that's there, just so I don't have to worry about this fly bar. Um, as you can see, I'm still to a point where uh, I'm at 67.2 degrees looking at this top number. Uh, as I rotate the head completely around full circle, uh, that's an indication that my uh, main shaft is perfectly level. Again, the fly bar doesn't have any impact in this because I have the link disabled. Uh, but for the next part of this build, I'm going to reconnect that link, uh, in which case the fly bar position becomes very important. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing we want to do uh, to prepare for the next uh, part of our setup is to reattach the link to the blade grip. And this gets us in the position that we're going to want to be in for the rest of the setup. All right, so just a quick sidebar here. One thing that I did notice when I was building is uh, just how much um, just general play there was in, uh, in the links. Uh, for the entire head assembly, and each link has its own little little bit of inherent uh, play or slop, if you will. But you combine that with all the different links uh, and uh, you know the uh, fly bar components for this particular style of head, and you can see, I mean, I can get nearly um, an entire degree of pitch change uh, just in how the head is positioned. So um, what I decided to do is. To make my measurements consistent, uh, instead of having to try and always rely on where I'm at, I wanted them all in the same place, whether it be on one end of the swing or the other end of the swing. Um, so I decided what I would do is uh, put a little rubber band around the blade grip uh, arm here that's coming out for this top link. You can see I have a rubber band doubled over, which basically pulls that up, and it's attached, you guessed it, to the other uh, link and it just runs over the head block and in this case right underneath my fly bar lock. Uh, but point being is that there's just a little bit of tension now pulling up on this so that it will be in a consistent position every time I measure. Um, and same thing with this side. They're basically pulling a against each other and they're, they're in a consistent position uh, and 
it's not too much tension that it puts pressure on the servos, right? You can hear them clicking if I put manual pressure. It's just enough to kind of bring all those links to one spot. That way I know when I'm measuring, I'm getting a consistent measure. So what I'll probably do is take a look at the variance uh, when I get to the point of setting my pitch and go, well, the bottom end of this, if I, if I tweak it the other way, is 0.3. The top end is 1.4 so what I'm going to shoot for is halfway between there as my number which would be roughly center point that way when it uh, releases and it'll be in the middle I think that's going to be my strategy for dealing uh, with just the uh, the slop in the system and uh, hopefully it will work out the way I think it will um, but basically like I said if by strapping this up just a little bit puts enough tension on it to where I, I take that variable out because that's an entire degree that's a lot when I'm trying to level a swash uh, and I want a little bit of precision in my measurements so uh, by by just putting a little tension um, I think I can make that consistent so anyway uh, back to the uh, the rest of the build so for leveling the swash um, we're tracing the link uh, rods from this particular uh, blade grip where the the Soko kit is, is, is uh, set up and basically it goes under, uh, hits the uh, mixing arm, comes down here and, uh, and pops out at this link right here. So this link uh, is now aligned with this uh, servo uh, and that is where I want to get my measurements. One of those for each of the three servos. And what I'm looking for is I want to get this number consistent. Uh, and I want to get it uh, as close to zero uh, as I think I can as I do this. So um, again, we're, uh, we're looking at a 0.1 and a 1.1-ish. So basically, I'm, I've got an entire... Uh, degrees worth of a uh, of pitch there. So if I get it to a 0.5 um, or a 0.6, I think I will be happy. So I've already taken a look at uh, how much mechanical adjustment I get out of the link. If I do mechanical adjustment, I get way too, too much uh, for what I'm trying to do. So I do want to make my adjustment in the sub trim now uh, for that servo. Uh, arm and that uh, I'm going to go into the sub trim menu. Uh, this is the pitch servo as quickly tested. Uh, so I'm going to put it back to where my center point was, and then basically what I'm going to do is adjust this down until on my gauge uh, I get to that 0.5 ish. Um, area that I was looking for before. So take a look at that number. So somewhere between five and six. I think that's going to be good. I'm going to lock that in. Now I'm going to move it around to this next servo, which will be my aileron servo. Let me adjust the camera. So I'm at a, basically a 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.0. So I'm going to go exactly the same thing there, 0 0.5, 0 0.6-ish. Sometimes it's nice to kind of reset the servo back to center after you make some adjustments, see where it's going to settle in. Okay, now let me move around to the rear servo. And uh, you can't see uh, this gauge point but just trust that I'm basically shooting for the same number over here using the uh, elevator sub trim. Okay, 
That's at a 0.6 right now, and it's bouncing back between a 0.5 and a 0.6. Now I'm going to go all the way around and start over again and just take a look at my numbers. I'm at a 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Go back to the pitch. Let me kind of reset the servo there. 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Lock that in. Back around. The reason you have to go back through it, it's a three-point surface. So if you manipulate any uh, of the one points, uh, it may impact the other points. So I'm looking for precision here because that's how I roll. What I'm looking for is about a uh, five to six. There we go. That nailed it. And uh, back around to the back one more time. And I'm already at a five. I'm just gonna leave it there. Quick check, all the way around, that's a five, that's a five, so there we go, um, basically let me get out of the sub trim menu, uh, I have the swash perfectly level, and I have a, a rough basically uh, estimation of where my sitter point is. Keeping in mind again, uh, I've got variance on the top end and the bottom end of this blade grip. So I'm just basically trying to find a sweet spot in the middle. All right, so we've got not only the swash plate level, we also have this blade grip zeroed out. So now what we want to do is take the Soko uh, helical, attach it to this other blade grip, and then check the uh, the blade uh, grip there and see how far off it is from zero. Now one of the challenges we have here is I don't have infinitely adjustable links. I don't have um, the uh, turnbuckle style links which I kind of wish I had right now actually. Um, I should just start buying those as part of every build because I love the, the ability to fine tune. Uh, you're limited basically to one complete turn of these standard uh, links, which is nearly a degree of pitch. Um, so if I'm anywhere close to uh, even half a degree difference between zero, I just basically have to leave it. Uh, there's not any more granularity I can get out of the links. Um, now that I know that my swash is level, uh, my only mechanism right now for adjusting pitch is going to be this link uh, right here that goes from the swash plate up to this mixing arm. That's the only adjustable link I have. All of my other links on this are fixed. So the link from the mixing arm up to the blade grip is a fixed size. It's just a plastic piece, uh, if you remember from the build. Uh, so there's, there's not any adjustability there. So my only adjustable option, like I said, is this link uh, right here that, that comes down from that mixing arm. So again, uh, wish it was a turnbuckle style. It's not. Um, but hey, that's how uh, we have to deal with it. So, all right, so I've switched blade grips. Uh, basically now the helical and the gauge is on the other side and I wanna check and see um, how close my measurements are uh, with this particular blade grip. Now, uh, I don't necessarily have to go to a servo point because I know that my swash is aligned. So I should be getting the same number um, all the way around and I am and that number happens to be a uh, about a point three. Um, so uh, what that tells me is I'm about two tenths of a degree different between the two blade pitch, plus or minus one uh, tenth of a degree in accuracy. So. Um, I don't know if I could ask for anything more. It would be cool to have a turnbuckle where I could go in and just adjust that out so it, it said 0.5, so it matched exactly the other uh, blade grip, but uh, that's pretty darn good right there. So I'm happy with that. Again, uh, the way I know that my swash is level is no matter where I put that, I'm going to get the same reading all the way around. And that's my indication I did a good job of leveling that swash. 
All right, a couple more things we need to do really quick before we wrap up this uh, head setup, and that is we need to check our uh, overall pitch adjustments, uh, both on the uh, the low end of the pitch range, high end of the pitch range, and then our uh, uh, cyclic maximums, both in a uh, aileron and elevator uh, position. So. So I have the uh, helical still in the blade grip. Um, I, I've moved it down to a, to the floor, so my uh, absolute uh, value for the uh, the pitch is no longer accurate. I'm no longer uh, with a level main shaft. I've moved uh, off the table onto the floor. Everything's changed, but that's okay uh, because I know uh, that I have basically my uh, blade grips zeroed out for all intents and purposes as far as I can get. So I can use the zero function just to get it zeroed out. Uh, so now I'm looking at that bottom number. 0 0.2 is fine, uh, it doesn't really, it doesn't have to be that accurate. So basically what I'm looking at is maximum positive collective and maximum negative collective. Uh, so if I go full positive, uh, basically what I'm looking for is how many degrees do I get uh, at a full positive. So I'm just about 10 degrees, uh, if I go full negative, I'm also right at 10 degrees. So that's good. That tells me that my swash uh, position on the main shaft is where I want it because I've got equal deflection uh, up and down. And to be honest with you, um, I think 10 might be where I stay. Um, you know, I could, uh, you know, a lot of people will say, you know, go for 11 or 12. You know, whatever you want to do, um, you know, 10 is a, is a not a bad recommended number. Uh, for uh, for maximum pitch. I'm not going to be doing anything super fancy uh, for a while, so uh, I just think I'm going to leave it at 10. So now that I have that, I'm going to uh, go back to uh, to center on the collective. And now what I want to look at is my, uh, my elevator. Uh, and basically I have, just, just for clarification, I have my blade grips perpendicular to the boom. And if I push uh, the, uh, the right stick forward, uh, using the elevator function, uh, I can see I'm at a 4.5, 4. And I'll pull it back. So yeah, four, four and a half. I'd like that to be a little bit more. Uh, that might be a little bit too tame. So I'm going to go into my uh, swash mix and look at uh, elevator. And while I'm holding it in the forward position, I can adjust that value. And I'm probably going to get it to about 6 by changing my swash mix. And go down to the other way. All right, so there we go. About a 6 and a 6. Um, and that's perfectly fine uh, for me, for my... Uh, uh, elevator. Now let's look at aileron, the roll. For this we actually want the blade grips to be parallel to the boom. Uh, so I've moved the helicopter just a little bit and I'll give you the view of the gauge. Uh, but basically now what I'm just doing is doing a left and right uh, roll on that stick. And you can see I'm at a 5.3, 5.5-ish. So uh, that's the uh, aileron. Again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push one direction in this case right, and then adjust that swash mix to get that to be 6 so that it matches the, uh, the elevator. Now this is totally personal preference. Uh, you, you may find that you want more or less roll uh, and more or less elevator or more or less uh, total positive or negative pitch. Uh, you build it to your preference. Uh, that's the cool thing about these helicopters is they're personal. All right, so that is it. Uh, basically, uh, we've just um, set up the helicopter. There are some other things to consider, uh, such as um, whether or not your, your uh, endpoints are correct. So if you do full negative uh, and full positive, uh, you might, uh, might want to check and see if your swash is still level. Um, so one way you could do that is with where it is in the blade grip, uh, you can see I'm at a 9.9 .9, uh, uh, degrees, and then if I rotate that, 
um, do I have an equal value? Now this isn't going to work for me right here right now because remember my main shaft is no longer straight up and down. I moved it on the floor so that I could get an overhead shot for you. Um, so what I'll do is, uh, is go back in, realign my main shaft, and then do that check. Um, but basically, uh, just like we did at center stick, you can drop your stick and then check the three points of your servo uh, and see if you need to raise or lower uh, servo travel endpoints. Um, and the same thing for a high stick. That will allow you consistency throughout. So I'm not going to do that for you. Um, it, it's basically exactly the same process as leveling the swash, except you just want to do it at uh, low position. And in this case, you're not using sub trim. You're not messing with links. Don't touch any of that stuff. Just use your, your servo travel uh, endpoints. Um, but that's it. Um, I'm uh, pretty excited. I really dig the Soko uh, kit. Uh, it's it's uh, Pretty awesome that you can uh, do an entire head setup without taking everything apart, uh, and uh, and I like the precision. I'm kind of a precision monster. Uh, that's why it drives me crazy that uh, the helicopter is less precise than I want it to be. And a lot of this, you know, there are builders out there who will say an eyeball uh, is enough of a tool to mostly set up all this stuff. And I would agree. I've seen people set up helicopters uh, just visually, um, looking at the links, looking at the swash, taking a look at the blade grips. Uh, there's the old tricks of uh, you know throwing the uh, the driver um, down inside the blade grip, and when the driver hangs straight down, you know that uh, that your your blade grips are at zero. There's all kinds of easy ways to do this, um, but uh, I really like the the precision. Um, maybe not this helicopter demanding it right now, but when I switch to a DFC head, uh, I'm going to want even more precision than I that I've got out of this flybar head. Uh, but uh, you know it is what it is. Really cool. Um, so that is the head build, uh, and also using the Soko kit. It's kind of a twofer right here. I got you two things in uh, in a couple videos. Um, the next thing I got to do is get my tail uh, put together. I have uh, my servo mount coming uh, in the mail. Should be here either today or tomorrow. Uh, in which case, I'll be able to get my tail servo set up, set up the gyro, and uh, I think I need to black balance my blades. Uh, I. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what I'll do video on versus uh, uh, versus not, but uh, I might do some video on, uh, I don't know, who knows. Anyway, stay tuned. Uh, this thing is coming along, and I'm about ready to get it flying uh, because I'm tired of looking at it sitting on the bench. Have a great one. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.